I am Swasti Karolingam, representing the United Federation of Labour and UNITE, which is a coalition of unions and civil society organisations. We have gathered this press today, unions, civil society organisations, we have gathered this press today to warn people of the biggest robbery which is going to happen on the 28th of August, committed by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, together with the Ranil Rajapaksa government and aided and abetted by the parliament. On the 28th of August, the EPF and ETF monies of 2.5 million account holders, there will be a decision taken to slash it nearly to 50% of that EPF and ETF money if this domestic debt restructuring package is seen through. So we are calling it the biggest robbery in recent Sri Lankan history. Because this is done at gunpoint. We can't go and protest in front of the central bank because they will, the government will deploy the military and the police. So this is done at gunpoint, where they are robbing and denying people of retirement savings. You remember, on the 1st of July 2023, the parliament took a decision to subject or made an offer to the central bank to subject the EPF and ETF funds to domestic debt restructuring. Now, despite the fact that the parliament and the government and the central bank are doing this, pretending to act as if one is offering and the other, other is accepting, it is the central bank who came up with this package to subject the EPF and ETF account to this domestic debt restructuring. So what is this domestic debt restructuring? Essentially, what they are saying is that out of the revenue of the EPF and ETF account, they will be deducting 0.5% of GDP equivalent worth of money every year. And therefore, that amount of money will be set aside from the local debt servicing of Sri Lanka. So essentially, the EPF and ETF funds, the revenue which the EPF and ETF funds, the, the revenue which that those funds will be gaining will be slowly depleted. And eventually, economists warn us that this will deplete the funds. When a person during retirement or when he retires, goes to withdraw the money, he will only get 50% of the value uh, which he is supposed to get at that point. Now, there is several central bank has been coming and saying, no, no, we will guarantee 9% interest and so on. There are several arguments on whether the central bank can, in fact, pay this 9% interest or not. But what we have to keep in mind is that, firstly, 9% in this time of high cost of living and inflation, 9% is literally nothing in terms of interest. And when people should be getting interest rates of 10% and uh, uh, interest rates of 15% and 20%, the central bank simply coming and saying, we are going to pay 9%, it's not a big deal. And what we have to remember is that if this domestic debt restructuring package goes through, the people will lose their, their retirement savings almost close to 50% is what economists tell us. So while all of this is happening, we all know this is happening in the context of this Inland Revenue Amendment Bill coming in, where now the government is saying they are going to impose a 30% taxation on the EPF and ETF revenue. Mind you, EPF and ETF, over 600,000 account holders do not even earn that much, do not even earn that much to afford taxation, to afford pay taxation even now, even while they are earning. So imagine when you are not even paying taxation when you are earning, but you are slapped a 30% taxation at your retirement. So you can see how, how unfair and how, how horrendous this, this package is in terms of the working people of Sri Lanka. While all of this, this is happening, this EPF and ETF theft is happening in the context where people are no longer eating in this country, people are starving in this country, electricity bills and light bills have gone up so much that houses no longer have electricity, houses no longer have running water, taxations are being imposed on all classes and where people can't afford to live anymore because it's not only indirect tax but it's also taxation on their income. So, so draconian taxation is being imposed on people so much so that people can't live anymore. And we can go on as to what is happening to this country. Corrupt privatization deals are being put in place and so on. So much so that in today's context, People of all classes, whether it be the working class, whether it be the professional class, whether it be the middle class, people are exiting this country. There's a mass exodus of young people from this country because this country is no longer viable to live. Society is disintegrating because of, because of the, the economic and social repression which we have been subjected to. 
I also want to bring to your attention that today, despite the fact that we call it a democratic country, today we are not, we can't call ourselves a democratic country because we are ruled by an unelected president, supported by the Rajapaksas, whom people wanted go, gone home last year, supported by the Rajapaksas, an unelected government, an IMF which is unaccountable to the people of Sri Lanka, and the international creditors who are basically saying, we need our money back. Starve your people, starve your people, and pay us every dollar you borrowed, despite the fact that they knew who they were lending to. Their own documents say that they knew that the Rajapaksas were stashing off the monies which were borrowed in offshore accounts. So they knew who they were lending it to and still gave this odious debt to this country. And now they are telling the Sri Lankan people, now they are forcing the Sri Lankan people to starve and pay back their money. So the country is governed by this evil axis of the Ranil Rajapaksa government, the IMF, and the international creditors. And if we continue to, 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 bear this, to bear this suffering in silent, to bear this repression in silent, we won't have a country to call of our own. So therefore, as unions and civil society organizations, as a collective which has come together to put a common resistance on the 28th of August and to warn people of this robbery which is going to happen on the 28th of August, we call all of you to come to the Fort Railway Station at 12 o'clock. Come as unions, come as civil society organizations, come as individuals, bring your friends, bring your family, and stand there, hold placards, and tell the government that this, we are not okay with this. We are completely opposed to the government, and, and the government continuing to steal the money of the, of the Sri Lankan people. So come and show your opposition and resistance on the 28th of, 28th of August at 12 noon uh, at the Fort Railway Station. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,